my father's gone crazy. He smashed all our records, all our music. Can you see me? Even my favourites. I begged him. He said it's for our own good. But if they find the records in our house, we could go to prison. Our neighbours are leaving their apartments. People are leaving their apartments, leaving town. The Lahoys have gone. They packed everything in suitcases and sports bags as if they were going on holiday. What's that record? My favourite. It's in pieces. I'm keeping them. You won't be able to listen to it anymore. I got it for my 10th birthday. How old are you now? 12. You look older. I'm tall for my age. I didn't know children listen to this kind of music. I do. Who's the guy on the cover? The violinist, I mean. I don't recognise him. It's my grandfather. He's so young. He recorded this concerto before I was born. Why is your father breaking records like this? We're not allowed anymore. Allowed to what? To listen to this kind of music. It's forbidden. You're a super strange kid, Sarah. You're the one who's super strange. And you're always sweating. Always. Every day's a heat wave here. You have to drink water with a slice of cucumber. Sounds cool. I'll try it. Something's ringing. What are you talking about? Near you. There's a ringing sound near you. Hello, I'm Karis Ainsley and I translated this last piece of Sky. I'm joined by Kevin Kais, who is the writer of the play, and he's going to tell us a bit more about it. Um, hi, Kevin. How are you? Hi, I'm doing well and I'm super happy to answer your question today. Brilliant. We've just heard and, and a short <laughs> extract um, where we saw two um, young people um, who are very isolated. Um, and struggling with very difficult situations, but connected by this mysterious bond. Um, how do you think young people seeing the play um, will kind of engage with it after what they've lived through these last couple of years? Um, I wrote this play before the health crisis and, and the lockdowns and all the states of emergency, but I think that all the characters and the play are living a, a lockdown in their mind, in their country. They all need to escape. So maybe we can read this play in a different way because we all know in our souls, our flesh, what it means to be deprived of, of our basic freedoms. So my place is above all a story of escape, getting out of our your head getting out of a country threatened by dictatorship or and and for the two main characters music is a, a way of escaping so i don't know maybe that new way of reading the the, the play is is moving a bit yeah and the the musical theme is really strong isn't it um, and Sarah and Louis live in, in different countries. Um, so Louis is in Paris. Um, Sarah is in an unnamed country where there's been a military coup. Um, how did you go about writing those two different places? Because they have a very different feel. Did one come first or one come more easily than the other? Mm, I especially wanted to talk about, you know, family ties that, that are not the same. A, a single mother and her two sons, a typical family with parents, son and daughter, but also the presence of the grandfather. And um, I think what my obsession was siblings, how life events change relationships in a family. So the subject of the play is, is faith, um, faith in yourself, faith in others. It is thanks to music that the characters reach another dimensions. So both Sarah and Louis are faced with an emergency situation. Sarah must leave her country. Louis must find his mission 
and he's sure he can say the word. And so Louis is locked up in a psychiatric hospital because he thinks he, he's an angel. And the only one who gonna believe him is his brother. So yeah, this is do, two different, not words, but families. Yeah, and you talk about faith there, um, and it, the, I think the play kind of asks us to think about, can we believe in something that we don't fully understand? Um, and there's something really mm. mysterious about the play. I mean, there's plenty in the play itself that is unexplained or um, maybe inexplicable. Um, do you think it's harder to write a play like that, and um, that's kind of ambiguous and maybe a bit fluid, rather than a play that is issues driven or focuses on a specific message? Mm, I think I, I write political, um, yeah, theater, but it's not um, militant theater. So um, that is, um, I don't know, there, is, there are no slogans or labels or message. I don't tell people how to think how interests me is that they feel sufficiently um, paradoxical emotions to wonder what they're thinking. And um, I'm also thinking about um, of the actors and I don't know, I don't want them to take uh, a role by thinking my character is simple or this is that point of view. I want the character to be as complex and as um, contradictory as we are in our lives. So I believe that that is the function of theater. Otherwise, I would be in politics or publicity or. Brilliant. Yes. No, it's a it's a really fascinating and beautiful play. Thank you very much for answering our questions. And um, we and hope to see you in London when the play's on in May. <laughs>